AP Calculus, Stuff You Must Know Cold. Last year I attended teacher training by a great calculus teacher from Indiana, Mr. Bird. Of all the cool stuff I learned at his technology workshop, one of the best parts was a sheet he had for his students called AP Calculus Stuff You Must Know Cold. One of my students, Chris, I call him Siege, asked me a couple weeks ago, feeling a bit overwhelmed by all the things we need to know in calculus. He asked me if there was some kind of list of things he really needs to know, and I thought back to Mr. Bird and his training last year. So, are, if you are amongst the 99.99% of calculus students not taught by Mr. Bird, I say to you today, never fear, G-Dog is here. I've taken Mr. Bird's concept and concentrated it a bit more on AB calculus, and I hope it helps and am confident that it can and will help if used. This is a video version for my students who would like to replay it from time to time. I will also make available a hard copy version available for my students. First, I'll ask the question, what does it mean to know something cold? Well, knowing something cold means you need to know something so well you don't even have to think about it. If I asked you your name and you could, you could easily remember it without having to think hardly at all. If I asked you what 3 squared is, you would easily tell me 9, almost without thinking. That's what knowing something cold means. Why do you need to know this stuff cold? You need to know this cold because on your AP exam, you'll get a lot of problems like this one. If the quotient rule along with the power rule and the point slope form of a line are things you know cold, then you don't have to search around to solve this problem. This problem then becomes an easy problem that takes you less than two minutes to solve. Or this problem. If you know your tangent and cotangent derivatives, this problem is less than 30 seconds. If you don't know them, it's either going to be a guess or a long time figuring out what the right answer is. You won't have time to fool around during your test in May. Now, to the calculus stuff you must know cold. I call them basic derivatives. We have the derivative of x to the n power is n times x to the power of n minus 1. And that's the power rule. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. The derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. The derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x. The derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x. The derivative of cosecant x is negative cotangent x cosecant x. Note that every trigonometric ratio starting with c has a negative sign when derived. The derivative of ln u or natural log of u is u prime over u. And the derivative of a to the power of u is a to the power of u times u prime. And now to three major differentiation rules. We have the chain rule, and it's the derivative of f of u, where u is a function inside of a function, or a composition of functions. The derivative of f of u is f prime of u times u prime. The product rule is that the derivative of the product of u and v is u times the derivative of v plus v times the derivative of u. And the quotient rule is that the derivative of the quotient of u and v is v times u prime minus u times v prime over v squared. Now, curve sketching and analysis. y equals f of x must be continuous at each critical point where dy dx equals zero or is undefined. And look for endpoints. We have a local minimum where dy dx goes from negative to zero to positive, or from negative to undefined to positive, or uh, d squared y dx squared is greater than zero. We have a local maximum where dy dx goes from positive to zero to negative, or from positive to undefined to negative, or where d squared y dx squared is less than zero. Point of inflection, concavity changes. If d squared y dx squared goes from negative to zero to positive or from negative to undefined positive, or if d squared y dx squared goes from positive to zero to negative or from positive to undefined to negative, if d squared y dx squared is positive, then you have concave up. If d squared y dx squared is negative, then you have concave down. More derivatives, d dx, of a to the power of u of x equals a to the power of u of x ln a times u prime. d dx log base a of x equals 1 over x times ln a. 
d dx inverse sine of u over a equals 1 over the square root of quantity a squared minus u squared times u prime. d dx inverse cosine of x equals negative 1 over the square root of quantity 1 minus x squared. d dx inverse tangent of u over a equals a over a squared plus u squared times u prime. d dx inverse cotangent of x equals negative 1 over 1 plus x squared d dx inverse secant of u over a equals a over the absolute value of a times the square root of quantity u squared minus a squared times u prime. d dx inverse cosecant of x equals negative 1 over the absolute value of x times quantity x squared minus 1. Definition of a derivative the limit as, a approaches, as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, or alternatively the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. Distance, velocity, and acceleration. Velocity is d dt of the position. Acceleration is d dt of velocity, or the derivative of velocity. The average velocity equals the final position minus the initial position over the total time, or delta x, over delta t. The displacement is the integral from t sub 0 to t sub f of v dt. The distance is the integral from the initial time to the final time of the absolute value of v dt. Intermediate value theorem. If the function f of x is continuous on the closed interval a to b and y is a number between f of a and f of b, then there exists at least one number x equals c in the open interval a to b such that f of c equals y. Mean value theorem, if the function f of x is continuous on the closed interval a to b and the first derivative exists on the interval a to b, then there is at least one number x equals c in the open interval a to b such that f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Rolle's theorem, if the function f of x is continuous on the closed interval a to b and the first derivative exists on the interval a to b, and f of a equals f of b, there is at least one number, x equals c, in the uh, open interval a to b such that f prime of c equals zero. Trigonometric identities. The Pythagorean identities are sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. One plus tan squared x equals secant squared x, and cotangent squared x plus one equals cosecant squared x. The reciprocal identities are secant x equals 1 over cosine x, or cosine x sine x equals 1. Cosecant x equals 1 over sine x, or cosecant x sine x equals 1, and cotangent x equals 1 over tangent x, or cotangent x tangent x equals 1. And the double argument identities are sine 2x equals 2 sine x cosine x, cosine 2x equals cosine squared x minus sine squared x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Cosine squared x equals 1 half times quantity 1 plus cosine 2x, and sine squared x equals 1 half times quantity 1 minus cosine 2x. Fundamental theorem of calculus. The integral from a to b of f of x dx equals capital F of b minus capital F of a, where capital F prime of x equals f of x. And the corollary to the fundamental theorem of calculus, d dx of the integral from a of x to b of x, f of t dt equals f of b of x, b prime of x, minus f of a of x, a prime of x. Approximation methods for integration, Riemann sum, the integral from a to b of f of x dx is h sub 1 w plus h sub 2 w plus h sub 3 w, etc., h sub n w. The trapezoidal rule, the integral from a to b of f of x dx equals 1 half times b minus a over 2 times quantity f of x sub 0 plus 2 f of x sub 1, etc., etc., plus 2 f of x sub n minus 1 plus f of x sub n. Average value theorem. If the function f of x 
is continuous on the closed interval a to b and the first derivative exists on the interval a to b, then there exists a number x equals c on a to b such that f of c equals the integral from a to b of f of x dx over b minus a. This value of f of c is the average value of the function on the closed interval a to b. Solves of revolution, etc. Disk method. The volume equals pi times the integral from a to b of the radius squared dx. Washer method. The volume equals pi times the integral from a to b of the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared dx. General volume equation. The volume equals the integral from b to a of the area dx. And here's a table of values for the commonly used angles on the unit circle. This has been AP Calculus Stuff You Must Know Cold. Thanks for viewing.